Let's bring in Michael Wilbon, co-host of Pardon the Interruption, uh, also covers the NBA for the Mothership. You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram, at Real Mike Wilbon. Wilbon, how are you today? Dan, I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm doing okay. How's uh, how's t- Mr. Tony's Nationals? You know what? I mean, he's uh, he couldn't actually stay up and watch the games for himself. <laughs> Technology had to help him the next morning. But, uh, as, you know, as I told him we had dinner last night, I said, you know, you, you better figure out some way to celebrate and enjoy this because who knows if it'll happen. You don't even know if you'll have your one of your four aces or your MVP third baseman. You don't know where this is going, so you better, you know, stop being sour and enjoy it. And I don't know if it registered or not. Wait, wait, did he not stay up till the end of Game 7? No. No. And he vowed he would with 7, Dan. Because, you know, there were there were games in which, you know, the drama was crazy and it was late. And I called a couple of times, and his wife, Carol, said, well, should I wake him? I want to wake him. And I'm like, I know, but he's going to go nuts. He's got to get up at 3.15 to milk cows or whatever he does at that hour. <laughs> and he, so, But he said he was going to stay up and watch seven, and I think he got five innings. So, no, not even seven. I mentioned this yesterday where it feels like I know less now than I did a month ago with the NFL. Like here we are at the halfway point. I, I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to know right now. Who's great, who's not, who should we be looking out for in the first, you know, second half? They had an easy schedule in the first half. You sold on Garoppolo with the Niners, you know, the Cowboys. Where do you stand on the halfway point of the NFL season? Um Dan, I th- I think that's because and I sort of had that reaction a week ago. I think it's because this is a lot of bad football. And people don't talk about that. They'll talk about if it's bad basketball. They'll talk about the baseball season has something wrong. They don't want to talk. They don't want to deal with that with the football. They just want their football. They don't want to examine the quality of it. And there's a lot of bad football. But, I mean, I think, see, I think I know. <laughs> I actually think I do know that San Francisco is this good. I mean, this good meaning not 16-0 and good. But, I don't know, 14-2 and two good? And I think despite the Patriots losing a game, they're going to still be 13-3 and three or whatever. You know, I mean, I think, that, I think the teams that we trust are, are few and far between. But that's okay. Because few and far between have they earned our trust. Um, and there's some teams out there that are just, I don't know, just ought to be wildly disappointed in the seasons they're having. And that, one of those teams is, is the one in Chicago, which I have rooted for my entire life. And the Cleveland Browns headline the show to me because everybody was so stupid as to invest a level of trust in them as if they were, you know, the Steel Curtain or, or, or some great team from a bygone era, the Cleveland Browns. And you're like, what are you, what are you, what are you people seeing? What are you putting your trust in? But I, I, so I think because there are more of those teams in that second group, that we, we were still hesitant, but I, I think we know who the good teams are now. Yeah, but Mike, if Cleveland goes 5-3 and three in the second half of the season, they end up 8-8, eight and eight, which is a game better than last year. That's improving, obviously, but that's, that'll be a disappointment in Cleveland, right? It, 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 this time it will be. Yeah. And I don't expect them to go 5-3. and three. I don't. I don't think they're any good. Now, their schedule lightens up a little. Yeah. So maybe they can. Maybe that's manageable. But 8-8 eight and eight for a team that actually believed its own hype, and the quarterback that they've got, I mean, I, I think that's still a massive disappointment for them, anything less than making the playoffs with the way they started. And they believed it. Clearly, they, they bought all the hype themselves. And it's like, really? And maybe Freddie Kitchens is just in over his head, um, and this was too much for him. But I, I, I certainly, you know, I, I just sort of love seeing what's happening to the Browns, given what they thought of themselves coming into the season. If I... If I gave you the power to pull the ripcord on Mitchell Trubisky <laughs> and you bring in, I'll give you Andy Dalton, but you say goodbye to Mitchell Trubisky. Yep. Done. And, and Dan, I was not a Trubisky guy from the beginning. I mean, I remember I live mostly here in Washington in ACC country. So Trubisky was not as foreign a, a name to people who live and watch ACC football a little bit as he might have been to other people. He only had whatever it was, 10 or 11 starts. And I saw some of them. And I just thought, why are they trading up to get this guy? If you think you see something and you want to take him, fine. There's no one battling for position to draft Mitchell Trubisky. Why are you giving away other people in the form of draft picks who should be 
pro bowlers. But, Mike, or the Bears right. were in competition with common sense. That's who they were fighting. <laughs> yes, that's it. They are fighting common sense to trade yeah. up to get Mitchell Trubisky yeah. Jr. You, the third. How could you watch? How can you, how can you do this professionally? I, I, I think I know the answer. But how can you do this professionally, Dan, and you take Mitchell Trubisky over both Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes? It's 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 readout. I mean, it's Watson readout. to me didn't make any it, that you can't pass up on him. No. I, I I know that you know everybody now revisionist history with Mahomes, and I give that you know all the credit to Andy Reid because he saw it. He he played his cards great. There was mixed reviews. Deshaun Watson was everything that you ask in a quarterback. He, he's smart, good kid. He was big uh, in big games he had proven there. Proven at the previous level what he could do. Yeah, and and you know what, Mitchell Trubisky was. Like I look at Mitchell Trubisky the way I do Daniel Jones. If if I watch your games and I don't remember you, <laughs> it's not a good sign. No, it's it's not. And that was the point that I was like, and you traded up to get him. Traded up. That's the part. The trading up makes it just egregious. An egregious mistake, and and you know people. So now, Dan, I see these questions. You know, for all these panels on whatever network that's talking about pro football, and it's do the Bears have to stay with Mitchell Trubisky? Of course they do. <laughs> they don't have anybody else. Chase Daniels is not a a real quarterback. If he was, he would have played sometime since 2015. And no draft picks either. And no draft picks and no money because you committed it all elsewhere. <laughs> and, 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 and by the way, it's understandable that you don't have those things because you, when, when, when they rested last year, they thought they had all the pieces and it looked like they did. And I, let me say this about the Trubisky episode. I'm not so sure Trubisky can't play for anybody. I think the bigger problem in Chicago, the bigger problem is the head coach. And, like, don't tell me mm. that somebody's got to fit your system. This is what I think is the biggest problem in the NFL now. As I look through the coaching, I see stuff like, I mean, Matt Patricia, somebody that people think really can coach. How do you run that play on oh fourth down God. after the Raiders have stupidly called timeout John Gruden and you don't have Galladay on the field? How do you do that? How is that, not, how is that guy not skewered? Because people don't even criticize the head coaches. They just go after players. He's and a, the head coaching to me is as bad as it's ever been in my lifetime in the NFL. He's Michael Wilbon, pardon the interruption, co-host, covers the NBA as well for uh, ESPN and ABC. Speaking of which, uh, Reggie Miller is on in uh, little more, a little less than an hour. And after LeBron's performance against Dallas, I uh, text Reg to say, this is why LeBron is better than Kawhi Leonard. And he came back and said... Uh, you know, Kawhi career year. I said LeBron's career averages are Kawhi's career year. Yeah. If Kawhi didn't win the NBA title, okay, would we be have this coronation that he's the best player in the NBA? No, but he did. I know, but I, it and feels by the like way, Dan. I'm kind of like I would I take think LeBron I'm with you. I would this, take I LeBron this year. I think LeBron is going to. Be, he's playing defense. He's in better shape. He's got Anthony Davis, and right. I, 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 I think he's, he's a little bit of an underdog this year, and I think yes. that's a dangerous place I, for LeBron. I think that works for him in, in a lot of ways. Yes, 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 I agree with every one of those check, check, check. Okay. But Kawhi, Dan, here's where – this is why I will never go all in with analytics or the use of any numbers. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard has a greater impact – on a game on both ends of the floor than anybody in the game today and last year when he's, when he's out there. I don't know about load management. And I know that LeBron – look, I, Kawhi's not about Mount Rushmore basketball. LeBron is. But what I saw Kawhi do with my own eyes last year – and remember this. If the San Antonio Spurs get a rebound, one rebound, late in the game, in the last nine seconds, yeah. Kawhi Leonard has three titles – and LeBron has two. And what will we what will we say then? What will we say about the whole thing? I mean, it's I but I do agree with you that that, that I think LeBron is if he physically holds up. And I, I I've had more people question that because like just older guys you and I covered forever, they say to me occasionally, "Hey, hey, I know what it feels like to try to do this at 35 or 36. Be careful." 
and there's that, that that warning is out there, and I'm going, okay, let me let me slow my roll just a little. But I think I agree with you about LeBron. By the way, as an aside, in that game, didn't you decide that Luka Doncic is one of the five best players in the game right now when you watch that 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 Laker Dallas game the other night? I always. I look at somebody and say, is the moment too big for you? And it felt like I could see that he embraced the moment. He's going against his idol and not not uh, nervous or afraid at all, yeah. taking it to LeBron, a uh, step back three right in his face. And I went, okay, now, now yeah. you've arrived. This isn't one of those, <laughs> hey, cute little curiosity right. guy down there in Dallas. Now it's, come on in. I, you know, I travel. I, I'll, I'll put on a show at your place as well. His ability to, and, and I think intelligence is is really what's sometimes lost on these great players. You know, Jordan was one of the most intelligent players I was ever around. Bird got more credit. He was the cerebral one. Mike was intelligent. So was Magic. LeBron, extremely bright. Doncic sees the game, and uh, you can see that where, you know, he, he's thinking out there. And, and uh, I, It all makes sense what he's doing. Yeah. And, and, and the, LeBron commented on that post game. I think Doris Burke asked him. And he, he, he went there right away about the way he plays and what he sees. Yeah, it's, it's, fun, to, it's, 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 it's fun to watch. For the Kawhi thing, it's a conundrum for a lot of people, Dan, because he does not have the, the measurables that everybody has to have now in order to make a certain argument. And my argument is, okay, this guy just wins a game. Like, whatever he has to do. And you can, I, I was reminded of it really in the Milwaukee series. And I'm like, yep. Yep, yep, yep. He's the best player on the floor. And now, is he the best player in the league? I don't, I don't know. What? I'm sort of just shy of that. Like, okay, would you take him over the Greek freak? Yeah. Because the freak has to show me one thing in the next six to eight weeks. And it's showing me right now. A jumper? Yep. Yeah. Your jumper, Dan. Your oh, my God. Your 16-footer. If, oh, you my God. used to shoot God. on the floor before we would do those uh, – Pre-game shows, he's got, he doesn't have to be three. It doesn't have to be three point deep, Dan. I know it's got to be what, 14, 16 feet, so people can't wall him off. Because I don't know if the Greek freak is better than Anthony Davis. When both, I don't either. okay, because Anthony Davis does have range. He's great at the line, and they're both similar in size. Now the Greek freak probably a better all around player, you know, with assists and blocks and steals and all that stuff. Anthony Davis, we forgot about. And now people are getting reintroduced to him because now he's playing on a big stage. And he's playing with a guy who can who can you bring of, out the take best the weight off of him. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's still as great as that whole list of guys is that you mentioned. And there's still a couple of questions, and maybe they're minor questions. We're not questioning Freak's heart or anything like that. No. But he he he's got to have. By the time we get to April, we better see that shot. So that when, when, when they do what Toronto did to him in, in the playoffs last year, you can say, fine, step off me. I, I'll hit this. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to see whether he made that, – that adjustment had to have been made over the summer. But he can't be like um, – you can't be like my man on Philly who is just afraid to, to – he just can't pull the trigger on a jump shot. Uh, the guys want to know – they were asking me yesterday about Stephen A. Smith's game. And, and we were around Stephen A. when we covered the NBA Finals. So you've seen both our shots. If it's, and you're a journalist. If there's a shooting contest between myself and Stephen A. Smith, where's your money? Hey, Rob, listen, I'm going straight stereotype. i got to take the old white guy with the jump shot. <laughs> wait, wait, it just became racial? It just became racial. Wow. Well, you know what, though? You, seriously, Dan, you know what? I've seen you play much more and certainly going back to when you were still, we you know, people, we, we all, you know what? Do NBA people cover the league? They don't play pickup anymore. We used to have to play pickup. I know. What? Well, you know why that is, though. And so I haven't seen Stephen A play as much as you would think, even though we spend so much time together. But, Dan, we, first of all, we were allowed into practice. We were not there in suits and ties. We were there in sweats to, to, for shoot around or whatever, or practice. And then you had to actually play with, like, guys who didn't get any minutes. Or, remember that? That doesn't happen. Like, do we know if anybody covering the league can play anymore? I don't know, but I know that there was the, I think, the Marriott downtown in Chicago when the Bulls were in the finals. Yeah. And we played a basketball game there. Jackie McMullen Rick Buecher, yeah, and it was on, man. I loved it. I was like, it was great. I mean, Rick Mahorn reminded me of that recently. 
because he asked the question and he just said, we, <laughs> we played all the time. And Mahorn, of course, set a screen on me early on in my career as a sports writer. And I, I think I woke up three minutes later. <laughs> and Mahorn loved it that I laughed at it and, and, and treasured it. I did because I wasn't good enough to, to, to be worried about the, the skill stuff. And Mahorn said, we used to play all the time, the people who covered the league. And I said, yeah, I think that's like everything else good. I think that's gone. But I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm taking I'm taking you on the jump shot. There. All right, all right. And I sprain ankles. I don't, I don't like to break them. I just <laughs> I sprain. Them. And I will post up Rachel Nichols. Okay. I, I'll, I will, I'll five three of Rachel. I, I will you. post her up. I believe, I'm taking you on that too. Hey Mike, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining yeah. us as always. Thanks for having me, man. That's, Appreciate uh, it. Michael Wilbon. Wilbon. Pardon the interruption. Five thirty Eastern, Monday through Friday. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel two thirty nine on Direct TV. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.